As Chief Investment Officer at Generali, the Italian insurer, Nikhil Srinivasan looks after a €450 billion Euro worth portfolio. Before joining Generali in February last year, Mr Srinivasan worked for the German insurance company Allianz in Asia and Munich. Born in Delhi, Mr Srinivasan studied at Cambridge University in the UK and Harvard's Kennedy School, and he's a naturalised Singaporean. Um, Mr Srinivasan, um, it's now seven months since Matteo Renzi took over as Prime Minister of Italy. How do you feel the reform process that he hoped to unleash is going and what do you feel Italy's prospects are? He's done quite a lot in terms of what he wants to do in his programme, in terms of announcing his programme for the last, in the last seven months, the labour reforms, judicial reviews, uh, tax cuts. I think, you know, if I look at it, it's just been seven months. When you told me seven months, I was a bit surprised because it seems a lot longer, OK? And I think this government is in a government on a mission and they're trying to achieve something. And I think that uh, you have to give them time because what they're trying to do is, is groundbreaking in the, in, if you look at the his history of modern Italian politics. The one thing that people don't talk about sometimes is the electoral reform. Electoral reform is very, very crucial for everything they will do legislatively in the next few years. So I think, again, he's tackling all these things almost simultaneously, which makes it a very hard job. I think the government's done a very good job. Now, if I look at prospects, your question on prospects, if you look at five years or ten years, all these reforms, assuming they pass, will be very good for someone either investing or working in Italy. Do you think Italy, though, remains the big danger spot in the Eurozone? I don't know if I'd call it a danger spot. I do, I do assume that Italy has got difficulties. I think it's very clear what the difficulties are, and the primary difficulty is a lack of economic growth. You can't have that level of debt burden and that debt servicing ability, cost without really being able to generate growth. And I think the government realizes this. They realize that they've got to generate growth. It has to become more of an obsession, not only for them, but also for the Eurozone as, as a whole to help Italy. And looking at Europe as an asset allocator, as you well, are, um, you've uh, recently taken a bet on private equity investment in mid caps in Spain. Yes. Um, is that, are you more positive about Spain than elsewhere in Europe? Uh, not particularly. I think when we look at our private equity portfolios, we are slightly idiosyncratic and we like to look where there might be opportunities. And I think mid-caps in Spain just turned out to be what we thought was a good opportunity for Spanish middle-sized companies. So as a recovery in Europe, we've been positive. In fact, I was quoted in your newspaper more than a year ago talking about being bullish on European equities. And I think that has worked out reasonably well, I think, for most investors. Um, you know, I think growth Without growth, though, I think any future market moves may only be driven by monetary policy. And I think we need growth. We need macroeconomic growth and we need corporate earnings growth. And both those remain uh, something that we've got to see more of. Where are you, um, where are you bullish on, apart from Spanish mid-caps? In Europe? No, Anywhere. globally. Globally, um, I like China. I like India. I mean, China is an issue because everyone was worried about slowdown and the economy is going to slow down, there's no doubt about that. But with a slow economy comes more efficiency. That's something people forget, and especially state enterprises in China will become more efficient. I think China and bullish on from a stock market point of view, taking a multi-year view. India and bullish on because uh, the prime minister there is, he seems, you know, focused on getting things through, getting infrastructure ready, uh, doing all the things that India has not done for the last several years. So very bullish on that. Um, generally, though, I'd say that, uh, you know, the world's in a bit of a growth slowdown. And being in a slowdown, you know, it's all relative. Is the, is the best way to put it. I think people are underestimating the amount of slowdown we're facing, not just in Europe, because Europe, uh, we, we all know where growth is in Europe, but I think uh, Chinese growth slowdown has a knock-on impact. You see it on commodity prices, you see it in the economies of, of Southeast Asia, emerging markets, et cetera, et cetera. So my sense is that the world's going to slow for the next couple of years. And as a consequence, you want to be in markets where there's some local domestic driven reform agenda, something which allow you to become more bullish on that particular market versus just a global view. Taking you back to um, Italy, you're yeah. a relatively unusual example in Italy because there are many senior Italians in businesses outside Italy, but within Italy itself, um, mm. it still ten tends to be very much um, uh, domestic uh, Italians leading companies. Um, do you feel unusual? I mean, do you think that says something about Italian business? To be honest with you, I can't speak about Italian business. I can speak about our company, Generali. Generali's been around for about 180 years. It's a multinational company. Uh, 
you know, if I look at my asset base, 75% of my asset base is outside Italy. Um, and I think that, uh, to be fair, if I look at our management committee, half of our management committee is not Italian. Okay, to be honest, I'm the only Asian on the committee, but half the committee is not Italian. And you've got to credit our, our CEO who came in uh, uh, a couple of years ago in terms of this change in mentality. And I think this helps not only generally, but I hope this will help Italy as well, because I think it's a dynamic global economy. And in any dynamic global economy, you should see more outsiders in positions of, of, uh, of influence, so to speak. So I, would, I may be an anomaly today, but I hope I'm not one tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Nikhil Srinivasan, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Sarah.